Hello everyone. Today we are going to talk about a snake bite. Uh, it is a very uh, commonly asked topic and uh, ideally we all should know about this topic because uh, irrespective of your course, irrespective of your position, the snake bite cases are going to come to the hospital, especially in the countries like India, which is a tropical country and uh, the season is just going to start. So I thought to make a video because uh, we uh, tend to make a very uh, genuine or very, uh, you know, uh, mistakes which should not be made while uh, treating the patients of snake bite. And uh, this will uh, prevent the unnecessary referrals. And it will also help in uh, saving the time and, at this, and uh, trying to do a referral at a time where it is needed and it is also help the clinicians to get a guideline what to do further so uh, these are the slides or these are the uh, notes which i have made according to the problems i have faced during the practice and uh, which are still uh, which most of the people do face so i hope these videos will help so let's start First of all, we'll start from the class. We, I'm not going to go into the which type of snake is that, whether it is a, a poisonous snake, whether it is a non-poisonous snake, what is anatomy, what is it's not, not at all. I'm just going to uh, elicit the clinical point and what is relevant in the clinics and the emergency wards. So uh, we'll see the classification and how clinically you can access that, whether it is a vasculotoxic, neurotoxic or a myotoxic snake bite. So first of all, uh, you have to see that whether it is an occult snake bite or whether it is an overt snake bite. What does it mean? Whether there has been a no marks. Usually the there is no marks in the in the crate bite poisoning, but it is very very toxic. It causes neurotoxic symptoms, but there is no history of bite. And patient says that us. I don't remember if something has bitten me. And uh, Hindi me wo bolte hain ki aisa laga ki koi uh, like someone blew and went off so it does not leave any scar or a mark at the other place we have an overt snake bite that is uh, that will have a history of bite there will be a swelling redness in that area and a progressive swelling in that area maybe there is a, a neuroparalytic features vascular toxic features a myotoxic features or a progressive painful swelling so uh, first of all, you have to reassure the patient because 90% of the snake bites are by the non-venomous snakes and only the 10% of the snake bites are by the venomous snakes. But each and every patient of snake bite should be uh, carefully examined and treatment should be uh, given accordingly. So uh, we have an asymptomatic and a dry bite. They, these uh, people will have a lot of anxiety, palpitations, tachycardia and paresthesia. What we are concerned about is a symptomatic snake bite. So patient can present you in one, two, three, and four ways. What are the one, two, three, and four ways? We'll see that. So first of all, patient can come to you with a progressive painful swelling. So what's that? So, uh, for example, uh, the snake has bitten over here. So in a few minutes or a few hours, you, have, you can see that whole of the arm is involved. So if in a few minutes or a few hours, whole of the arm is involved, that means it is a progressive swelling. It is usually seen with a viper snake bite and it comes under the category of a vasculotoxic snake bite, vasculotoxic symptoms, which we are going to discuss in the next slide. So for this, uh, uh, we'll discuss the treatment, but what is a line of treatment or the line of management is anti-snake venom. Second, uh, the patient is having a tosses. He's having difficulty in speaking, difficulty in eating, difficulty in breathing. That is a neuroparalytic snake bite, which is seen in uh, cobra and crate. And usually what happens, or what I have seen and what I have read in the textbooks is that uh, when the patient comes, he's very normal. He will not have any of the symptoms, but eventually over the time, over 30 minutes, the tosses starts to develop. So we have to be with the patient for the first 30 minutes to see whether the tosses is developing or not whether the blurred vision is developing or not. So it is very important. It is not that we just put the notes of ASV, uh, SOS and XYZ and just vanish off from there. You have to be in the emergency. You have to be in the ICU 
for 30 minutes from the time of admission and you have to continuously ask you have to teach the patient you have to teach the attendant that अगर ये symptoms आते हैं अगर उसको tosses आता है अगर उसको difficulty in speaking होती है बहुत ज़्यादा नींद आती है अगर उसको difficulty in eating होता है कोई breathlessness हो रहा है you have to inform us you have to come and inform us well most of the time they'll be like we have admitted them to the hospital and he should be fine but the symptom monitoring is very important even uh, i have seen a uh, tosses developing after 6 hours so the line of management is completely different along with asv we also have to give atropine and neostigmine an is a atropine and neostigmine so all together your treatment changes so we have to be very careful about that and also such patient because they are having shortness of breath you have to mechanically ventilate them so here an is the this an is what an is a atropine and neostigmine and mv is a mechanical ventilation because of the paucity of time and i was making notes i have used little short forms i hope it is fine and even i'll upload a pdf so that it does not create a confusion okay now again the patient is having a progressive painful swelling and uh, a lot of pain is there and for pain is disproportionate with the swelling it is again a wiper can be a russell wiper or a sea snake wiper the patient patient can have a bleeding they can have a disseminated uh, uh, dic they can go into shock and even they can develop an aki so if the patient is going into aki along with asv you also have to give dialysis and if the patient is profusely bleeding you have to give a uh, blood transfusion there there is also a uh, so if the HP is less than 7 gram per deciliter and the platelets are less than 20,000, uh, we have to give PRBC and uh, SDP or platelets respectively. Now, if the patient is coming to us with a myotoxic sign and symptom that is seen with a sea snake in that ASV and dialysis is sufficient. Now, what are the uh, various symptoms for the various uh, kinds of a snake bite? So if the patient comes to us with a neuroparalytic features, what are this? There is a tosses that can take up to uh, 6 hours to develop and maximum at 36 hours. There is a diplopia, there is dysarthria, dysphonia, dyspnea, dysphagia, involvement of 3rd, 4th and 6th cranial nerve. That is your, uh, uh, these nerves are very, very important because sometimes the patient will not come to you with the regular sign and they will come to you with the involvement of an oculomotor nerve, trochlear nerve and the features of abduce, abducent nerve that is uh, lateral lactus palsy, superior oblique palsy and extraocular muscle palsy and they can also uh, come to you with the paralysis of skeletal muscles or intercostal muscles. Now what are the tests which we need to do for the patient who come to us with a neuroparalytic snake bite? So the first and the foremost and the most easiest test is a single death count. So what we do, SBC is a single death count. What we do, we, you tell the patient to uh, uh, hold the breath. So he holds the breath. And uh, uh, once he holds the breath, you have to tell him to complete a sentence within one breath. Uh, so if he is unable to do, you have to see that how much, how many seconds he is able to complete the sentence. And second, is the unable to lift the head. That will again tell you a neuroparalytic features. So what are you going to do? You are going to give ASVs, anti-snake venom, you are going to give atropine, and you are going to give neostigmine. So why are we giving uh, atropine to the patient? Uh, when uh, So what's the role? So the role is the neostigmine, the main side effect of the neostigmine is that they cause this bradycardia. So to prevent this bradycardia, before uh, uh, giving neostigmine, uh, atropine is given. Okay. So now, after this, uh, the, such patients also uh, have been seen to benefit from the uh, early intubation. So if uh, the patient have a vasculotoxic symptoms, what are these? That is a progressive painful swelling. There's a bleed, there's echimosis, there's a, a swelling of the joints, formation of blisters, necrosis, development of compartment syndrome and tender lymphadenopathy. You can also see a visible bleed in the form of apistaxis, metamesis, melina can be there, there can be a hematochesia. Like basically, there's a bleeding from every side patient can also present with a uh, present uh, with the upper g uh, with the uh, abdominal gi bleed in the form of a acute abdominal pain so very important to ask the patient ki pet mein dard ho hai ki nahi ho second uh, third very important is pupil ka size you have to look for the asymmetry of the pupil size agar 
pupil ki asymmetry had the uh, hair that means there is some kind of a intracranial bleed and patient can also develop a dic and uh, presenting as a consumptive coagulopathy how does the myotoxic snake bites present as a name suggests myotoxic infect affecting the muscle so there are going to be a muscle ache swellings because there is a myotoxic muscle is breaking there is a rhabdomyolysis so they will have a dark brown urine so always ask them ki uh, urine uh, black to nahi aa raha hai brown to nahi aa raha hai red to nahi aa raha hai that is very much significant and compartment syndrome is there because of muscle breakage there is a release of potassium causing hyperkalemia and patient also develop uh, acute kidney injury because of myoglobin urea no so uh, one test we did is the uh, single breath count the second test which i need to discuss with you is the whole blood clotting time what is this and what is the significance of this whole blood clotting time so what we do is um, we take a glass uh, tube and uh, we put a blood uh, uh, approximate 2 ml of we take out the 2 ml blood and we put it in that and now you have to keep it uh, erect uh, you can uh, uh, yeah, what we you, what we do we stick it to the uh, wall and uh, keep it there for 20 minutes see after 20 minutes whether the blood has coagulated or not if the blood has coagulated that means it is not a hematotoxic snake bite but if the blood has not coagulated that means it's a hematotoxic a snake bite and uh, you have to keep on doing it until you do not get the values of inr because um, in some centers or in some peripheries inr is not available so you do not know whether it is a hematotoxic snake bite or not so in that case this whole blood clotting time is very very important and it is a age old test but still holds a importance uh, everywhere even if it is in a phc or you are sitting in a tertiary care because uh, you give asv according to that right if uh, the, it starts coagulating you know that okay the asv has uh, started to work so uh, let's talk about the management uh, again a clinical point of view not going to a lot of physiologies and everything so first of all like it's an emergency uh, case we all know there will be a lot of panic their patient can be in a shock they can be in arrhythmia he can be in the intense pain uh, and he can be in a uh, he can be in a neuroparalytic state mimicking a stroke so uh, you need to manage it in a very uh, emergent way so patient coming to you in a er so first of all uh, is same air airway breathing and circulation you have to see that whether the airways are patent you have to look at respiratory rate to rule out tachypnea you have to look at pulse rate and consciousness level according to gcs uh, take a short history from the attendants and do a uh, physical examination to look at the scar mark what is the size of the scar mark how many fang marks are present usually the toxic one have a two fang marks and non toxic have a one fang mark so fang marks whether the site of bleed uh, whether the site of bite is bleeding or not because you have to document all this this is very important even medical legally uh, says then you have to see a uh, swelling lymphadenopathy bleeding neuroparalytic symptoms like tosses the uh, dysarthria dysphagia dyspnea uh, every one to two hours then you have to monitor vital signs bp pulse rate temperature spo2 rvs whole blood clotting time and also the pulses all the peripheral pulses you have to see uh you have to even if the patient is asymptomatic keep him under observation for 24 hours now uh usually uh, in the peripheries and where the people are not so educated what they will do the at home they will do some uh, age old remedies like they'll uh, tie that them very tightly with uh, some kind of a cloth so that, uh, as if they think that uh, the toxin of the snake should not uh, you know uh, transmit to the whole body to the blood but what they are doing is actually harmful for the patient because patient can have a necrosis or a compartmentalization of that limb but the second mistake is being done by the clinician what is that uh, sometimes out of the absence mind or out of panic by the clinicians they tend to remove the tonic way very fast like patient has come they shout at the patient why have you tied it and they'll Im immediately remove it so what is going to happen what they thought will be now a actual thing the toxin will gush into the blood all the toxin all the cytokines which has formed in that period of time will gush into the blood you don't want that you don't want the patient to go into shock so what you do you uh, take the bp you tie the bp below the tonic way 
uh, okay and uh, uh, sorry you tie the it above the tonic way and uh, now you uh, uh, pump it above the normal sbp for example if it is 140 you uh, pump it in uh, 160 and now you have to uh, slowly remove the tonic way and you have to slowly deflate the bp cup this way you can you are slowly removing the tonic way okay Whole blood clotting time, I've already talked about. You have to go for the blood investigation if you are sitting in the higher center, starting from the CBC, RBS, bleeding time, clotting time, PTI, INR, uh, uh, D-dimers, FDPs, fibrinogen, LDH. Urine is very important for hemoglobin urea, myoglobin urea, any cast which can be suggestive of a AKI. You have to get an ECG to look at the hyperkalemia, CPK to look at any uh, cardiac symptoms, uh, you have to get a SGOT, LFT, amylase, serum calcitonin, cultures, ABG if the patient is going to a respiratory failure and a pulmonary function test because vital capacity holds a very important value. This. So now you have stabilized the patient. You have sent the investigation. Now what next? Now you be, or the slide which we all are waiting for, that is uh, ASV. That is the only treatment we have. Uh, so how much and how you have to give in, how it has to be given. So anti-snake venom, it is effective against uh, uh, four kings, that is cobra, dussel viper, sea snake viper, and crate. So when you have what when uh, ASV is indicated, it's a very important uh, theory question, viva question, and even a clinic question. So uh, that is important. When you are having local signs, what are these local signs? That uh, the patient is having a progressive selling, it is painful, there is a chymosis blisters in that area, constant bleeding from the site, uh, hematological bleeding, neurological symptoms like tosses is there, whole blood clotting time is more than 20 minutes, there's pain, abdomen and vomiting. I've already talked about patient is a shock, arrhythmia, AKI, hemoglobin urea, myoglobin urea, progressive swelling, crossing the joints, swelling in more than half of the limbs over uh, one hour and lymphedema passy. So what's the dose? If it is a neuroparalytic snake bite, this is... Uh, uh, for your knowledge, has been included in the recent API update that has been released in 2023. So, if it is a neuroparalytic snake bite, you have to give an initial bolus of 10 vials in one hour. And if it is a hematotoxic, it is 5 to 10 vials in 6 hours. So, uh, uh, I will uh, stop here and I want to discuss something very important is that uh, when ESV ka vial, dekhte ho, to, um, what is the tendency and most of the times we are committing that mistake and we should not do that at any cost. One, how to mix that ASV. So, jo ek ASV hota hai, uske saath, uh, 50 ml ka NS hota hai paas, hai? So, what you need to do is you have to dilute first that ASV. So, what you do, um, take the ASV, it is in a powdered form. You take a 10 ml of NS and you uh, uh, put inside it. Now, what commonly the mistake is done by the clinicians and the staff is that they shake it. They shake the bottle. You do not have to shake the bottle. You have to just swirl the bottle. So just swirling of the bottle is enough. So the one ESV is diluted at 50 ml of NS. Okay. So uh, similar way, if you are taking uh, 10 ESVs, that has to be diluted in 500 ml of NS. That is why in the notes we like, we write injection. ASV 10 vials in 500 ml NS. If it is a neuroparalytic snake bite over uh, snake bite over one hour, and if it is a hematotoxic snake bite over six hours. So this is how infusion has to be started. One. Now the next dose after six hours, wo kitna hai? should it be 10? No. It is five vials. Now five vials hai, aadhi rahe gai, to dilute bhi wo 250 ml NS. Mein hoga. So these uh, small little things are very important. Second change. Uh, first, it, it used to be said that uh, a ASV test dose should be given to avoid any anaphylactic reaction. This, but now they have discarded this theory. There is no need to uh, give a test dose. Third, earlier it was seen that uh, there was a practice of giving corticosteroids to prevent the reaction of ASV. Now there is no such guideline that you have to give a corticosteroids. Yes, you can clean the area. You can give a tetanus toxoid injection. That is fine because the patient is getting uh, infected to the ground and uh, there might, might be a suppose of clostridium. Okay, uh, monitoring. You have to monitor every five minutes for first one hour and then, then every 15 minutes for first two hours. So be with the patient for six hours ideally, but if not, at least for two hours. What are the complications? They can occur anaphylaxis. There can be a fever and serum sickness. 
So if there's uh, anaphylaxis, you have to stop the ASV. You have to give epinephrine and uh, uh, what is CPM? It is a close phenylamine. Uh, and then restart the ASV after 15 minutes. You do not have to discard it. Uh, third question, which used to be, uh, which used to come across is uh, whether we should give it in pregnancy or whether, uh, how much dose should be given in children? So uh, all the book says, whether it is a pregnancy or the children, the dose should be seen. same. So why the dose should be same? Because snake hasn't seen that whether he has bitten an adult or he has bitten a children. Okay, the do uh, he has uh, given the same amount of toxin both to a child and to adult. The dose has to be same. You need not uh, be uh, cautionary that if he's a child, you should give half the dose more. The full dose should be given. Also, give uh, antibiotic to avoid cellulitis. Okay, so uh, this is it. If there's a neurotoxic snake bite along with ASV, you have to give atropine and neostigmine. They give 0.6 mg of atropine IV followed by 1.5 mg of neostigmine. Why atropine is given? To prevent a bradycardia caused by neostigmine. So neostigmine ka dose is given uh, IM or IV and then uh, it is given 0.5 mg with atropine every uh, 30 minutes for 5 doses. So 5 doses de di tumne. Uh, 30 minutes, but that is at 30 minutes, one hour, one and a half hour, two hour, and two and a half hour. Thereafter, you have to give the doses at one, two hour, six hours, and 12 hours. Uh, uh, when to st stop this uh, AM combination? When the doses recovery is complete. If there is no improvement, even after the three, do three doses of uh, three days of, uh, th sorry, three doses of uh, AN combination, probably this is a crate bite. So in the crate bite where there is no scar, uh, there is nothing, but the patient is having tosses. So along with ASV, uh, atropine and neostigmine, we also have to give calcium gluconate every uh, six hours. If the patient is presenting in AK, go for early dialysis. In the Britain part, uh, broad spectrum antibiotic, TT booster and debride the necrotic tissue. If the patient is developing a compartment syndrome, we have to undergo a fissiotomy. The most common complication the patient can have a cellulitis. So uh, always give uh, antibiotics to the patient. So this is about a snake bite. I have kept it short, but uh, uh, very useful because these are the problems which I have faced from the first year of residency. And I have tried to cover everything. Uh, I'll put a Google link of the slides. I hope it is helpful and you, you can comment down any of the doubts or any of the slides you want it in the future. Thank you.